We finally made it. This castle will soon belong to me and I will be rich and famous and everything great. Oh no, he's so close. Oh, it's so sad. It's so... The health bar is not working. Yeah, that's... Let's get rid of these and get rid of that. All right, let's try this again. Back in 2014, Unity released version 4.6, which included a whole bunch of UI elements. So if we go over to the hierarchy and right click, there's a bunch of pre-built UI elements they provide for us. And what we actually want to use for any type of status bar, whether it's health or mana or stamina, is the slider element. The slider gives us a few things we don't need, but it, otherwise it has everything we do need. For example, we could start tweaking this value, and you'll notice this looks awfully like a health bar. So we can actually repurpose this, and it's really simple to do. A slider element, as you might expect, is interactable. So you can click on this handle and drag it when the game's running. So the first thing we want to do is disable that interactability. On our slider and the inspector, you'll see we have an interactable option, and we'll decheck that. And also for transition, since we won't be transitioning at all, we just want to set that to none. And you'll see a bunch of the fields get hidden. Lastly, we want to delete this handle slide area. And now our slider should be completely static. You'll notice that even though our slider is set to 100% of its fill value, it doesn't actually fill up this bar. So you can either shrink the background or increase the fill, which is what I'm going to do. So it's as simple as clicking on your fill object and then stretching it to meet where the background ends. While you're on your fill object, you can actually change the color to what you want your health bar to be. So I'm going to make mine red. And once you're here, it's just a matter of putting it where you want it to display on the screen. So you'll notice it created a canvas object as well, which is what all UI elements need since 4.6 came out. If you have a bunch of UI elements, but they're not children of this canvas, they actually won't display. So in our canvas, there's actually three different types of render modes. There's screen space overlay, which is kind of like your standard UI where it'll display over everything, regardless of what camera you're using. There's screen space camera, which is best used when you have multiple different cameras in your scene and you have different UIs per camera. And the last option is world space, where you could actually put it in your scene above like a character's head. As the name suggests, it's not based on your screen's position in any way. It's based on position within the scene itself. We're going to use screen space overlay, which is the standard move unless you know what you're doing and you want to use the other two. We can then click on our slider and open up our positioning here. We want to anchor this to the top left of the screen. And what that does is once we set our X and Y positions to zero, you'll notice it anchors to the top left of the screen. So we might try something where it's 150 in and negative 100 down. And if we hit play, you can kind of see how that would look. And while it's kind of small right now, that does in fact look like a health bar. So we can just drag this out a little bit. We'll try it again. And that looks a little better. So we'll leave it at that for now. And from here, we can actually worry about adding functionality to the health bar. Let's go down to our assets folder and right click and create a new C -sharp script. In an attempt to keep this script more modular, we'll give it a more generic name so we don't pigeonhole it to player health. So you can name it whatever you'd like, but I'm gonna name mine fill status bar because that's the behavior that's happening here. And we'll drag and drop this onto our slider element. Let's go ahead and open this in Visual Studio. Like always, the first thing we'll do is add some variables. Now on my player, I have a player health script that has a current health and a max health variable. And these are the ones we want to actually use for our status bar. So I'm going to make a reference. So a public player health, player health script. We also want a reference to our fill image. If we click on our fill object, you'll see it has an image component attached, which is what actually is being changed when you change the slider value which means we want to add a public image, fill image. It's gonna throw an error because we're not using the correct library. So you can do control period and use unity engine.ui and that should resolve that error. We have the values we wanna use, the image we wanna tweak, but we also need to set the sliders value as that is what determines what is being filled. So we need a reference to the slider. And since I attached the script to the slider, we can actually make this a private slider. Instead of having a start method, we could change this to awake for performance reasons. And in awake, we can just say slider equals get component 
of type slider and close that off. So when the game's loading, it will search the game object for this slider component and it will make a reference to it. If we think about the math equation for how we want this slider to be filled, it's actually very simple. You see we have a current health and a max health. So max health is 10. What happens if you take one damage and your current health becomes nine? Well, what's nine divided by 10? It's 0 0.9. 0 0.9 on the slider looks exactly like how it should. So that is exactly what the equation needs to be. We need to say float fill value equals player health dot current health divided by the player health dot max health. Right, so nine divided by 10, you get 0.9. And once we know it's 0.9, we want to set our slider dot value equal to fill value. In the editor, we then need to populate these empty variables. So I'll drag my player onto the player health and it will get that component for us and I'll drag the fill image onto the fill image spot. And then we're ready to test this. So if we hit play right now, we can go into our player and start changing the current health. So let's try eight, seven, six, five, four, three, all the way down to zero. And it's working as we expect. At this point, it's really a style up to how you want yours to look, but I don't personally like how this knob is at the end. There's a few ways you could deal with this, but I'm going to handle mine through code. So back in Visual Studio, at the beginning of our update, I'm going to say if our slider.value is less than or equal to the slider.min value, the min value is something you can set on the slider itself. Same with the max value. If our slider value is less than or equal to zero, then we basically want our fill image to not be enabled anymore. So we'll set enabled equal to false. And on the flip side, if our slider.value is greater than the slider.min value and our fill image is not enabled, so if our value is greater than zero and the fill image is disabled, then we want to re-enable our fill image. And finally, just to make this a little more interesting, after we've calculated our fill value, we can actually do a check to say if our fill value is less than or equal to the slider.max value divided by three. So if our value is less than a third of our slider's max value, if our max health is 10, our current health needs to be three or lower we'll say fill image dot color equals color dot white. You could also make this red or yellow. We also want to do the opposite of this. So else if fill value is greater than slider dot max value divided by three, fill image color is equal to color dot red. And again, you could set this to whatever color you're interested in, but we can demonstrate this now. So if we go into the game, if we set this to three, you'll notice that it changes to white. And if we change this to zero, we don't see the knob anymore. And conversely, if we change it back to one, then it shows up. And if we go higher than three, so let's try five, it turns back to red, which is perfect. We have a functioning health bar. That's gonna wrap it up for this tutorial. It's a pretty simple health bar, but it should do the trick for at least the early stages of your game. If you have any questions or you're having trouble getting this going, then leave a comment and I'll try and get back to you. If this video helped you out, please leave a like because that helps the video out a lot. And for more Unity tutorials, make sure you subscribe! subscribe.